guys, welcome back. My name is Miss Johnson and I am so thrilled again to be working with you on phonemic awareness. Do you remember what we said phonemic awareness is? That is games, that I like to call them games, where we listen very well with our ears to get ready for what our eyes will see when we read. Now remember that sounds are what build words. Words are what build sentences and sentences is how we get great information and listen to fantastic stories. So our phonemic awareness gets us ready to become fantastic, wonderful readers. So we're gonna do some activities today that will help your ears really get in tune, okay? So let's go ahead and jump on in. Our first activity we're gonna do is I'm gonna tell you some super fun stories. We're gonna count the number of words in the story, the sentences, we're gonna count the number of words in the sentences and then we're gonna see what sound do we hear at the beginning of those sentences. Are you ready to jump on in with me? I can't wait. So our first word, sentence, not our word, there are gonna be words in it, right? Our first sentence is James juggles jelly beans. Can we say that together? James juggles jelly beans. Let's pound it. We wanna put a pound for each word we hear. Ready? James juggles jelly beans. Let's do it again, ready? James juggles jelly beans. Can we count those? Let's count the words. James juggles jelly beans. How many words did you hear? Did you hear three words? I heard three words too. Excellent job. Now what sound did we hear at the beginning of those words that we heard that sound over and over and over? Ready? James juggles jelly beans. That's right, the sound we heard over and over was the j sound. Excellent job, you guys. Let's do one more, ready? It's about Carla. Carla went camping with her cats. Carla went camping with her cats. Let's pound each of those words we hear. You ready? Carla went camping with her cats. Yeah, it was easier to slow that down. Let's do it again, ready? Let's pound it. Carla went camping with her cats. Let's count the number of words we have, ready? Carla went camping with her cats. Oh my goodness, there were six words in that sentence. Now it wasn't every single word, but what sound did we hear a lot? Carla went camping with her cats. Did you hear the k sound? Yeah, don't worry about what letter says that right now. We're just listening to our sounds. The sound we heard over and over was the k sound. Excellent job, you guys. So, I know that we've been having some fun with compound words. I love compound words. They're so much fun to me. Remember, compound words are when we have two words and we smush them together to make a bigger word. Okay, so we're going to blend these compound words together. We're going to have some pictures and we're going to see what two words do we have and when we put them together, what word do we get? We have cow and boy. Are you ready? Cow and boy. Put them together. What do you get? Uh-huh. Let's do it again. Let's do it together. Ready? Cow, boy, cowboy. Did you get cowboy? There he is. It's a cowboy. The word cowboy is built of two little words. Ready? And those two little words are what? Cow and boy. Great job. Should we do another one? I think you're so good at it. Let's do one. I'm so excited sun and glasses. Get your hands ready. Sun and glasses put together makes sunglasses. Sun, glasses, sunglasses. Let's see. There they are. We have some sunglasses. Let's do one more with pictures. This is a door and a bell. Let's use your hands. Ready? Door, bell. What did you say? Let's do it all together and we can do it together. Ready? Door, bell, doorbell. Let's see. There it is. It's a doorbell. Remember that doorbell is two words put together. Let's do a few without pictures so we can just use our ears, okay? Let's see. We have shoe and box, okay? Shoe, box. What word did you get? Let's all do it together. I want to hear you really loud. Ready? Shoe, box, shoe box. Now, some of my shoes I keep in the shoe box. Do you ever do that? Yeah, my husband doesn't, but I'd love to keep some of my shoes in my shoe box. And so do the girl, my girl too. You ready for the next one? Star and fish. Ready? Star, 
fish. What word would you what word did you get when you put it together? Let's do it again. Ready? Star fish starfish. Excellent job, you guys. Let's do one more without pictures. You ready? Wheel and chair. Okay. Get your hands ready. Wheel, chair. What word did you get? Did you get the word I think you got? Let's do it all together and let's see if we can say it together. Ready? Wheel, chair, wheelchair. Yes, excellent. So we had wheelchair as our word, but if we break it apart, wheelchair becomes wheel and chair. And that's what we're going to do the next time. We're going to take our compound words and we're going to break them apart. Okay? So let's see what do we have here. Grasshopper. Ooh, a grasshopper. Ready? The word is grasshopper. Can we break it apart? Grasshopper becomes grass and hopper. Excellent job, you guys. I know it's harder to break those words apart because we've got to figure out where to break it. But think about the two words that you hear inside of that bigger word, okay? This is a snowflake. I know we don't get to see snowflakes down here, do we? But maybe one day you'll get to see one, so the word is snowflake. Say that word, snowflake. What two words do we hear in snowflake? That's right, we hear snow and flake. Excellent, you guys are so good. Then we have yummy, yummy, yummy popcorn. Oh, I like to eat it, do you? The word again is popcorn. What two words do we hear in popcorn? Yeah, you're right, we hear pop and corn. Shall we do a few of them? Let's just do three, but we can do it without the pictures, okay? That way we can just use our ears, okay? The word is handbag. What's the word again? Handbag. What two words do we hear in handbag? You're right, hand and bag. Hand and bag. Let's do the next one. Ooh, I know we use this every day. It's a hairbrush. Yep, a hairbrush. Do you ever think about when you're brushing your hair that the word is made of two other words? Yeah, what two words do we hear in hairbrush? Hair and brush, exactly. You guys are so great at this. Let's do this last one. Butterfly, it's the right season to see some butterflies. So if the word is butterfly, what two words do we have? You're right, butter and fly. My goodness, guys, you guys are so great at this. I am so glad. Now, those were the bigger parts, but let's break those words apart a little bit more. And let's do what Ms. Johnson likes to tell you about is onset and rhyme. I guess you guys gave a little preview, didn't I? Hopefully you didn't see it. So let's see. If we have the first sound in the word and then we have the vowel sound and everything after it, we're going to figure out what that word is, okay? So the word that I have first is d octor. The sounds again, d octor. Put it together, what do you get? You're right, we get a doctor. Did you see it? <laughs> Maybe you didn't, but I know you could get doctor. Let's see, the next word is zebra. 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 Yes, you got the word zebra. Excellent job, you guys. What about j acket? J acket. Jacket. Yes, a jacket. So great, so great. Let's do a few without pictures. You ready? How about p aper? P aper? Paper. Yes. How about this next one? T able. T able. Table. Yes, great job. And then let's do g arden. G arden garden. Oh my goodness, you guys are so super smart. I'm so proud of your work. Now, let's think about more that we can do with this second part of the word, okay? We can listen for the second part to see if it matches another word's second part, and that's how we can figure out if words rhyme or not. So I'm going to show you some pictures, and we're going to give a thumbs up if those words rhyme, and a thumbs down if they do not, okay? So, the first two are bed and drum. Bed and drum. Let's break that word bed apart. Ready? B, ed. B, ed. And dr, um. So we have ed and um. Do they rhyme? 
You're right, they do not rhyme. Great job. Let's do these two, pig and fig. Remember, we're going to do the first sound and then the vowel and everything afterwards. Ready? P ig. P ig. And then let's do fig. F ig. F ig. What was the sound in pig? Ig. What was the sound in fig? Ig. Did they match? Yes, they did match. So that's a rhyming pair. Fig and pig, they do rhyme. Should we do? Let's do another one. We have two pictures here. We can just figure out if they rhyme, right? How about base and race? Base and race. Get your hand ready because I think it's going to help you guys so much. Ready? B, ace. B, ace. Try race. R, ace. R, ace. So we have ace and base and ace and race. Ace and ace. They do what? They match, they're exactly the same. So base and race, you got it guys, they rhyme. Let's do two more. P and feet. P and feet. Remember, this part has to be exactly the same for it to rhyme. Ready? Let's do P. P E. Now let's do feet. F eat. You're right, they do both have the E sound, but feet ends in that t. P, e, f, eat. Do they match? They're close, but no, they don't match. No rhyming there. Oh my goodness, such a great job. You guys, y'all are so amazing. You are so very wonderful. You've worked so hard. I think it's time, why don't we go have a seat and read a story together, okay? We're gonna read the story, Old Mother Hubbard. Have you ever heard of Old Mother Hubbard? Every time I think of Old Mother Hubbard, I think of that cupboard. And what's a cupboard? A cupboard is just something you keep either food in, and some people keep their plates in the cupboard. We don't really call it that as much anymore, do we? But that's what the cupboard is. So we're having to read nursery rhyme, right? We're getting to read a nursery rhyme. And then the front is gonna be the regular nursery rhyme that you've heard a good bit of, and then it's going to be the story that they've written about the nursery rhyme. So we have Old Mother Hubbard. Old Mother Hubbard. Old Mother Hubbard went to her cupboard to get her poor dog a bone. But when she got there, the cupboard was bare. So the poor little dog had none. Oh, do you feel sad for that poor little dog? I know, I want him to have a bone too. So let's read the story. The Hubbards like to eat snacks. Would you like some cookies? Asked Old Mother Hubbard. Yes, I like cookies, said Old Father Hubbard. I like cookies too. Old Mother Hubbard went to the cookie jar. We have cookies, she said. Yum, I like cookies, said Old Father Hubbard. The cat was hungry. Would you like some cookies? Old Mother Hubbard asked the cat. No, I do not like cookies, said the cat. I like fish. Well, that kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah, cats don't usually like cookies. Old Mother Hubbard got the cat some fish. Yum, I like fish, said the cat. The dog was hungry too. Look at that dog's face. <laughs> yeah. Would you like some fish? Asked Old Mother Hubbard. No, I do not like fish, said the dog. She's a sweet old lady, isn't she? Would you like some cookies? Asked Old Father Hubbard. No, I do not like cookies. May I have a bone? Asked the dog. Yes, said Old Mother Hubbard. Then she went to her cupboard. But when she got there, the cupboard was bare. Do you know what that means? It means there is nothing to eat in that cupboard. Oh no, we have no bones, said Old Mother Hubbard. Boo hoo, said the dog. Then I will have none. <laughs> Poor little puppy dog. That was the story of Old Mother Hubbard. I'm so excited that you like that story, okay? So, when uh, you meet with your teacher, she's going to ask you about the story of Old Mother Hubbard, and I want you to tell her what you think the best snack in this story was. Did you like the fish? Did you like cookies? Or would you like a bone? Yeah, I don't think you'd like the bone, would you? <laughs> I know I wouldn't. Guys, I'm so proud of all the work you're doing and all the things that you're learning. I can't wait to get to see you again tomorrow, okay? All right, have a good day.